what takes you to Cuba? Well, actually, I was in uh, the Cayman Islands, and uh, I had basically uh, two options on getting, or three, actually, to get back to Mexico. Uh, one was through Panama, which is a little far away, and uh, one was through Miami, which I avoid at all costs to the U.S., and uh, there was a flight direct to uh, Havana, Cuba, so I flew back uh, to Mexico through Havana, and I stayed there for about 24 hours. Any important observations? How, how are they doing these days? Well, it was interesting because I haven't been there in about six or seven years. It's uh, improved slightly. Uh, the um, the uh, the Castro family has uh, loosened up a fair amount in the last uh, few years. They've uh, started to allow some free enterprise. Uh, they're starting to work towards a little bit more capitalism, and it's definitely showing. I asked the taxi drivers and hotel people and, and people I met uh, how it was going, and they said it's improved. Uh, but it still is uh, quite uh, communist. It still has really no, uh, not much competition in many areas, including the Internet. Uh, there's, there's actually no, I haven't been in a country like this before. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure North Korea and Cuba are the only two places uh, that I know of. I've been to about 100 countries that don't even have uh, data on their uh, mobile phone network. Uh, mm. So there's, there's no data whatsoever. There's no 3G, 4G. There's no G. Uh, and, uh, That's so primitive. And, Oh, it's How very do they live? Oh, that's, why, that's why I left so soon. I was, planning on, staying for a, <laughs> I was oh. planning on staying for a few days, but uh, I just couldn't handle the lack of internet access. There's only really two or three hotels in the entire city uh, that have internet. Uh, the Cuban people themselves really don't have much access to internet at all. I believe some schools allow some internet, um, but uh, and it's quite slow as well. Uh, there's only one provider, of course, the government, and <laughs> we all know how that works when it's it's the government in charge of things. So, uh, yeah, it was really uh, it, hard for me to be there because I'm just an internet. Uh, I'm addicted. I need the internet. Everything I use over the internet. <laughs> so to to be away for I did have access to uh, Facebook, uh, to email. Uh, they block. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, they block Skype, uh, which is funny. Uh, so you're not allowed to uh, use Skype in Cuba. You can't. Whoa, and, uh, wait, I don't know. Skype this, is uh, blocked. I, I heard... Like, what's the justification for that? Um, I'm not. Well, who knows uh, what the justification for any of these criminal acts by the Cuban government are? But uh, I would suppose that they don't want anyone there talking to anybody. That it's it's really uh, bizarre to see. It's like going back. Of course, as you've seen in the photos, you see all the cars that are from like the 1950s or or earlier, like 1940s. Mm -hmm. That's most of the cars on the road are from that. I don't know how they keep them running, but they do. And uh, many things like that are like that in Cuba. They just it's almost like it's got stopped in time, like 40 or 50 years ago. And and uh, it's just amazing to see. And the, yeah, the internet is just really uh, blocked off. Hardly anyone has access to it. If, if you do, like I, I paid uh, $20 for 24 hours in uh, Parque Nacional uh, Hotel, which is one of the nicer hotels in Cuba. And yeah, I actually had Wi-Fi in my room, which is a change from five or six years ago when you had to go down to the business center and use it. Um, so it's, it's interesting. And they also, and I don't know this, I just heard about this. Uh, it wasn't from my own personal experience, but any porn site you could possibly imagine is blocked in Cuba. <laughs> any, even the ones that I like can imagine that don't even exist yet. Those crazy ones, they're blocked too? Damn. All right, well, no, hold on. I want to ask, though, in terms of the implication here, is Cuba still a communist country? Yes, definitely. Um, it's uh, you know, it's it's the by far the most communist place I've been. Uh, I, of course, many people say China is communist, but it's not. The Chinese government uh, calls itself the Communist Party. They've just been doing that for decades. It's just sort of uh, they just never changed the name. But it's definitely not a communist country in the sense of that the government controls everything. Uh, the government is the provider of all uh, uh, businesses, and and uh, people all work for the government. Things like that. It's not like that at all in China. Same with Russia. A lot of people still call that communist, but it's it's totally not. Russia's okay. Actually... Well, hold, hold on. I want I want to get to uh, to a definition and see where you're drawing the line here, though. And I, and it's you're you're very good at pointing out how. China and Russia are nominally communist, and Cuba is in a different category. But if communist is from each according to his ability to each according to his need, then that's then communism is impossible. Like it doesn't exist. It can, it can never exist in a world with real people because those are impossible things to quantify or to systematize or create in government. And I, you know, it's interesting to point out that in China, it's the Communist Party. But as we know, in some ways, they, they are more free market than in the United States right now. And that's why in some areas, and I don't mean in general, but in some specific aspects, they're having outsized growth. 
compared to the United States, and now they're buying up properties here. But where do you draw the line, and how would you say that, that, that Cuba is like conceptually different on those counts? Yeah, just to uh, talk about China and Russia as well, um, uh, I think the U.S. In, in almost every facet, not all, but almost every facet is more communist now than China or Russia by far. Uh, the U.S. government is involved in every industry, regulations, taxes. Um, in places like Russia and China, it's actually quite free. There's actually cities in China that are completely anarchist. They don't even have a government and they're just booming like crazy, as you would expect, because there's so much freedom. Uh, so it's it's really interesting to, to see the different styles of these governments and 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 the differences between them. And now, of course, Cuba is by far the most communist place I've been. Uh, I haven't been to North Korea, uh, which I guess you could call communist. That, or I would probably just call North Korea uh, more of a just a, 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 a tyrannical government or a, a dictatorship that's just. Uh, controls everything but i guess you could call it communism i guess that's what they do i mean again but what again what's the difference it's kind of a matter of semantics right if if communism like we see in china or even in cuba is not so much an actual system as much as it is an excuse and in order to continue the excuse they have to say well we're taking care of everybody too you know of course the north korean government would say oh well we take care of our people and that's why they allow us to control so much right yeah, it's, it's really, it gets so difficult to sort of quantify the difference between these governments because in many ways they're all the same. Uh, right. For example, it's, in a, the, it's in a matter the, of degrees of statism. Yeah, that's why some of these words don't really mean too much anymore, uh, communism, because uh, really I see all governments, any, any form of government that actually uses violence to control people, which is government. If, it wasn't, if they weren't using violence, they wouldn't be a government. And if uh, they all, all use theft, taxation as well. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I consider that all centrally planned. So uh, what, whenever mm -hmm. I see a government, it just appears to me as a centrally planned thing as opposed to a, a individuals that all have their own abilities to do whatever they want. So it's just different to degrees of it. And you see different, uh, for example, in China, uh, they, they don't allow much press freedom at all. Uh, whereas in the U.S. they allow some, although it's getting worse and worse. I believe the U.S. on the uh, press freedom index is now number 43, I believe, Ooh. just uh, yeah. above Somalia and just behind <laughs> Haiti. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, again, when you have the internet flourishing, it almost doesn't matter because it's it's kind of wide open, although I know a lot of that, what, what's included on the index is taking into account how that works on the internet. So back to that, in Cuba... Would you say that the, the, and I guess you can look at the various controls of, of the internet throughout the world, and the United States government really has done, uh, by government standards, a relatively poor job of stifling the internet effect. And maybe it's because, sort of, it was born here, there's an expectation, there's a demand for the quality of life type of stuff that goes with it. But would you say then a fair observation from Cuba is that communism as as we have so nebulously defined it at least is only made possible when you can control the flow of information and suppress the internet yes absolutely i would extend that to all government is only possible if you can do that because of course the the meaning of the word government the, the root of the word is govern, which is control, and ment, which is mind. It's mind control. And once you lose control of that, uh, you can't really have a government because governments don't make any sense whatsoever once you have access to information. It just makes no sense at all to uh, have everyone under this one ruler, which whether they can choose him or not, and it doesn't even matter in the U.S. anymore, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, steal from, from uh, almost everybody and then say they're getting a bunch of stuff for free. That doesn't make a lot of sense once you start to think about it. Uh, so, and of course, so many of the reasons that people say that we need governments are things like, well, there's you know a lot of bad people out there, and therefore we need government, which is made of people. To, and right. of course, where do all the bad people all gravitate to? And and people say things like, oh, if it wasn't for government, there'd be a lot of people just out there robbing people. Well, is it any better to have every single person in the country get robbed every year through taxation and inflation uh, so that a few people don't just rob on the street? And not to mention the fact that that, that probably wouldn't happen anywhere near as much because people would be much more prosperous without all this taxation and regulation. And, there, and of course, it's not like people steal uh, on the streets and, and rob people just because it's fun. Uh, for the most part, they do it because they're desperate and they, they need money. And, uh, and so all this uh, problems that people say that we need the government for is all caused by the government itself, which is, uh, which is why once people have access to information, they start to think about these things, they start to hear this information, uh, they pretty quickly will, dis will figure out that government is a unnecessary evil. My balls, you shouldn't touch them. And he didn't. Yes, it started. And film what happened. 
A TSA agent's face is like right in front of this thing. 